but I, it is just great to see so many friends in the audience today. I really appreciate everyone coming out given the topic of energy, and I'm particularly impressed that everybody's out today given, like we talked about earlier, the uh, lack of petroleum products, and so I know you value every molecule that's in your tank, so thank you for using a few to be here today. Um, the interesting thing also about that, and before I go, people that know me really well and know me for a long time, I don't want any emails later about what are you doing with the readers on. Okay, <laughs> but um, the whole the whole issue of um, Katrina, Rita, and now Ike, which is sort of the second punch, um, it, it's just not a phenomenon. The the trends over the years, uh, and we in the utility business track the trends extensively. Um, we have been charted on this path, and this path that we're on, a lot of people call it an energy crisis. I tend to call it an energy policy crisis, and that's the key word, policy crisis. Um, we have an abundance of supply. Um, in fact, and I'll speak to my product, natural gas, if we just look at the resources that we have today in the Rockies, the shale, and oh, dare I say Anwar, um, we have in excess of 100 years of natural gas supply. It's a domestic product in over 100 years, but instead, we find ourselves overly dependent on foreign sources, and everybody in this room knows the countries that these particular products come from, and they're chronic with corruption, and as well as they're not exactly the most environmentally friendly countries in the world. So we are taking our product from those countries. And it really wasn't always that way. If you go back and look at the math, 25 years ago, nearly 60% of U.S. petroleum was produced domestically. Today, it's 25%. So from a peak in 1970, <coughs> U.S. production has declined a staggering 47%. 47%. But today, over 90% of U.S. natural gas is produced in North America. So why are we not consuming more natural gas? All right, now I know you're thinking, okay, we've got a utility executive up there, so I must only see drill, 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 drill here, drill now, and the infamous drill, baby, drill. <laughs> but that is only one of the solutions. I would, even, I would say it's certainly part of the solution, but I would say the real solution, again, is around policy, and Congress needs to take action, and we do need a comprehensive plan. And I do work closely with my uh, good buddy Charles Tarbutton as chair of the chamber, and we have a committee that is completely committed to energy and environment, and our work is the same. And we have had the fly-in a couple way weeks ago in D.C., met with our senators, our congressional delegation, and it wasn't just about drill, drill, drill. It was about we need a comprehensive energy plan. And a comprehensive pl plan does mean domestic production, certainly, but it also means nuclear, and we need to expand our nuclear program, and it means commitment to clean coal, in my view. Uh, we also need to modernize our energy infrastructure. We do have aging infrastructure. But we also need to invest in renewable and advanced clean air technologies. They have to be a part of the program. And I think the part that uh, people are most surprised about from the utility executive, we also talk about energy conservation and energy efficiency. I mean, the, the highest use of every molecule is being the most efficient we can be with those molecules. So certainly efficiency and conservation are part of the program. And this means our building envelope, working with our builders and developers, working with the state, and making sure that we are doing the best with every decision that we make. Now, I've been with Atlanta Gas like a few years, as you mentioned. And so I've known the value of this product for many, many years. And it's part of the reason I've stayed with this company, because I'm passionate about the product and what it can mean in terms of energy independence for this country. Um, but I'm also passionate about um, what it means for our future, our children and our grandchildren. And the interesting thing is the industrial community, for example, has known the, the value of this product for decades and they use it in their processes frequently um, because again of the efficiency, how environmentally friendly it is, and, and as a hydrocarbon it is extremely pure. Um, also, my good friends over at Georgia Power, they figured it out some time ago and started building their, newer, their new facilities burn natural gas to produce KWHs. And again, it has to do with it's a domestic fuel. The um, pipeline infrastructure is in place to deliver that commodity, and it's clean. So a couple of factoids, the engineer in me. Did you know that natural gas is the cleanest burning fossil fuel? As compared to coal, natural gas emits 45% less CO2 emissions. And as compared to oil, natural gas emits 
30 percent less CO2 emissions. It's a beautiful thing, and you've got to love it. Did you know that the use of natural gas is very efficient? When I take a molecule of gas out of the Gulf of Mexico and place that in the pipeline infrastructure, and it's delivered to whatever the use is, be it a business, be it a home, 90 percent of that fuel value, that heat value, lands at that burner tip, 90 percent. Now, I love the power company using our product as well, but when a molecule comes out of the ground and goes through the power plant and, and it's consumed at the power plant, 65 percent of the energy is lost. Now, I'm not saying don't use them in power plants. It's value out there as well. I'm just saying the product, natural gas, is extremely efficient in that, in that infrastructure, and the closer you can get it to use, you get the higher value. And that, my friends, is why T. Boone is spending $60 million on advertising to advance the cause of compressed natural gas vehicles. Now, why is he so interested? It's an untapped market. Now, if we go to the next little slide there. That's why he's interested. Um, I know you've had a long, long lunch. I mean, you've had a long lunch. It was several courses. So I'm going to give you a few little facts and to kind of wake you up a little bit. Just kind of do a shout out if you think this is true or false, so I can wake up Wansley in the back back there. <laughs> um, natural gas, true or false, natural gas burns cleaner than gasoline and other alternative fuels, reducing emissions by up to 95%. True or false? True. There you go. All good. Tests have shown that CNG vehicles produce 20 to 30 percent less greenhouse gas emissions than comparable gasoline vehicles and up to 15 percent less than comparable diesel. True. True. What do you think, Emery? True. True. Factory built NGVs produce emission levels lower than any other fuel except for hydrogen, even lower than electric cars when power plant emissions are taken into account. You're catching on to this, aren't you? <laughs> the, the current cost of natural gas is about $1.50 per gasoline gallon equivalent. $1.50. It would be under $2 for the same for a large fleet application, even after adding the cost of the capital. UPS and MARTA are using CNG. Very good. The Honda Civic that you're looking at in this picture, and by the way, too, is down at the front entrance if you guys want to go kick the tires a little bit with it. Um, is recognized by U.S. EPA as the cleanest commercially available internal combustion vehicle. Okay. There are 12,000 CNG fueling stations around the world, yet the U.S. claims 1,100. But we have 100 years of natural gas supply. No hard getting up. AGL has the expertise and can provide the necessary infrastructure to expand the use of NGVs. Now, this is my advertisement, so y'all say true. I'm go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you get to drive home today in your own NGV, compliments of Atlanta Gaslight. True. False. But you can't go to kick the tires. <laughs> in summary, I'd just like to say that the, the, the future of energy, it really is in our hands. It, it really is. We know what to do. We know what needs to be done. We understand the policy issues. And I completely agree. I think Americans are mad. They're mad, mad, mad. And when Americans get mad, things happen. I, I see it and I believe it. We've got the energy. We've got the technology. We just need to take action. And all of us in this room take action, but encourage everybody we know to take action. So thank you very much. I've gotten the flash over here.